All right. Um, so my name is Stuart Sierra. I work at Relevance. Uh, I'm here to talk about Closure Script primarily. Uh, this will be a general introduction. I'm not going to go into uh, a whole lot of technical detail. So how many of you have seen or played with Closure, the language? About half, OK. Um, so if you haven't, uh, very brief overview. That's Closure. That's what it looks like. Uh, it's a dynamically typed language. It runs on the JVM and compiles to Java bytecode. It has a Lisp-like syntax, so there are lots of parentheses. And uh, it's organized around immutable data structures, functional programming, and concurrency. So, you know, if you've never read Lisp code before, basically you read it from the inside out. And the parentheses are maybe in a different place from where you're used to seeing them, but they're actually not all that strange once you get used to them. So here, this is just a little function. Uh, it's defined in a namespace called Philly ETE examples. And then defun means I'm defining a function called average. And then I have the arguments to the function in brackets. Starting with an ampersand, that means it takes a variable number of arguments. I can pass any number of arguments to this function. And then the body of the function. And generally, when we're looking at Lisp code, we sort of think about evaluating it from the inside out. So I start inside from left to right. I see the reduce plus nums. That means I'm going to take the collection of numbers that were passed to this number, uh, that were passed to this function, and I'm going to reduce them using another function. I'm going to take plus, I'm going to apply it to the first two numbers, then take the result of that, add the next number, and the next number, and so on, and eventually that will give me the sum. The next thing I'm going to do is take the count of how many numbers I have, and then that slash there, that's the division function. So this is sort of like prefix notation in arithmetic. So I'm going to divide the sum by the count, and that gives me an average. Uh, now you can see this is dynamically typed. I can invoke this function on exact integers, and I get an exact ratio answer. I can also invoke it on floating point numbers, and I get a floating point answer. I could also invoke it on a string, and I'd get a runtime error. So just, you know, as a very casual comparison, this is what, you know, the difference between uh, a Lisp-like functional language and a language like Java. Um, notice in Java, I've written the same function, but I have to put it inside a class, because everything in Java has to be attached to a class. Uh, I had to explicitly declare that this function only operates on a uh, double function. And in the middle, I've got an imperative for loop, where I explicitly iterate through all of the numbers that I got in the list. Um, you know, obviously, they give me the same result. Let's see, the closure one has one, two, three, four, five, six uh, brackets or parentheses or grouping things. And the Java one has one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so closure has the same number of parentheses as Java. Um, <laughs> you know, just, they, they're just arranged a little bit differently. So closure script. Closure script is a dialect of closure that compiles closure script source code, which is very much like closure source code, into JavaScript source code. So it is a source to source compiler. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that the compiler is actually written in closure, and closure runs on the JVM. So this is sort of how it looks. This assumes that you have Java somewhere. You have a JVM running on a server or a development machine, and that's where you run the compiler. And it emits JavaScript, which you're then going to run somewhere else. So the big question, of course, is why? Why would you ever want to do this? Uh, first of all, why do we want to target JavaScript? Uh, you know, it's kind of odd. We're compiling one language into another language. And hopefully by now, at this point in the evolution of the world, the answer is obvious because it's there. JavaScript is uh, very often the only computation execution engine available in some environment. And it it's, goes way beyond web browsers. Obviously, every web browser has JavaScript in it. Lots of mobile devices. Uh, not just you know, in their browsers, but they actually support JavaScript directly now. 
Uh, it's probably the closest thing there is to a cross-platform uh, development target for mobile devices.